the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy feast day, Skrasnikom. Today we uh, have, we celebrate the, the great feast of the Nativity of our uh, most pure Lady Theotokos and Never Virgin Mary, who was born of a promise. And this is one of those feasts, one of those feasts especially of the Mother of God, in which uh, the source of the material is not really, in, it's not in the scriptures, but rather it's in uh, the book called the Proto-Evangelion of James, which has been one of the, uh, probably the most important uh, apocryphal books that the church has used uh, over the course of the centuries, because it records all of the, all of the information that we have about, about Mary, about her family, about John the Baptist, and about his family, and, um, and uh, the, the birth of the mother of God, and her rearing, and her entrance into the temple at three years old, and her being given over to Joseph, and all of, all of that. So this material is, uh, is very important and very dear to us because uh, the mother of God is, is, is not just the mother of Jesus, but, she is, uh, but, but through him she has become our mother as well. And so when we celebrate her birthday, uh, we, should, we should celebrate not only um, the fact that, uh, that she was born some 2,000 plus years ago, but, but also this, that it is a kind of, uh, uh, that it's a birthday within our, within our own family. And when we, think about, when we think of the mother of God, we think of her purity, we think of her, of her uh, virginity, we think of, of uh, all of the virtues which she embodied. And theologically, what, what is going on? It's not just the birth of this little girl who was born to Joachim and Anna who were barren. Um, uh, Joachim went, went into the temple and his offerings were rejected by the priests. They said, no, you haven't brought forth any children in, uh, in Israel, therefore uh, God has not blessed you and therefore we cannot accept your offering. Could you imagine um, going, going, to, going to the temple and, and being told that you're not worthy to even make an offering? Um, and uh, Anna too had uh, had lived uh, uh, had been with her husband for many many years, and they were already uh, they were already old. Um, and and so uh, Joachim uh, got a, got a message from the angel from an angel that that said that uh, that you will that you will uh, bear a child. And so he went into Elizabeth, and we have this, this famous uh, uh, this icon, which we have a copy of back here, um, which we put out on the, on the right day, uh, called The Kiss. And it's the coming together of, of, of Joachim and Anna uh, for the conception of the mother of God. But theologically, there's, 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 there's much more going on as we celebrate this feast. Because the mother of God, Mary, would, would impart all of humanity to Jesus. She gave, she gave the totality of not only of herself to him, as he took his flesh from her. But in taking on her humanity, he took on our humanity as well. And thus... She is this indispensable element, this indispensable um, uh, uh, part of, of the whole mystery of the Incarnation. Because her hum through her, our humanity was incarnate in the Lord Jesus Christ. And through her, we are incorporated. Into, into, into the Logos incarnate. Now the, the Roman Catholics have a doctrine called the Immaculate Conception um, in which uh, they, they have the idea that, uh, uh, that she was born without, original, without the stain of original sin because there was a, 
a special grace that was assigned to her. And St. John Maximovich said it's, um, uh, it's a bad, solu- bad solution to a non-existent problem. <laughs> um, because we believe that uh, she, like every other child, is born without sin, without the guilt of sin. And she, like, like all of us, was born mortal in this fallen state um, in, of, of our humanity because that's simply what human nature was. Uh, it, it, we had inherited mortality. And so when we celebrate her dormition, as we did just a few weeks ago, she, she manifested that, that, yes, she too, like her son, the incarnate word of God, accepted even to die. And that he would not leave her, her body to, to corrupt in the tomb. So on this day, as we celebrate her birth, on one hand, she is born as Um, as is every other child. And she is like and she is like us absolutely in every way. But because of because of her because of the grace that, that was given to her, she did not sin in the totality of her life. There was nothing in her life that ever separated her from God. And so what we see in her is the fruit of God working with the people of Israel to bring forth the one, to bring forth that one person who would be truly obedient to God. Our Lady Theotokos. And it's through that obedience, through that which, and that obedience is synergy with the will of God. That obedience is, is a complete self-surrender to God from the time of, from the time of, her, of her infancy to the very moment of her death in which that quality of the image of God in her was fulfilled in likeness, having united herself by her own by her will to the will of God, and thus fulfilling her personhood. And in fulfilling her personhood, she has raised human personhood because of the love of her son into heaven itself. It's important to understand that. Um, theologically, Jesus was not a human person. He was the divine person who took on our humanity. But who he was was the Son of God. What he was was both God and man. And through that assumption of our humanity, he not only raised our humanity in himself to the throne of God, but out of love for out of love for his mother, he raised her up as well. There are great echoes in the Old Testament of, the, uh, uh, of this relationship between the king and his mother. Uh, uh, we have in Psalm 45, we have in, uh, we have in, men, in many other places uh, uh, at thy right hand stood the queen, clothed in golden robes. They're not referring to the, to the wife of the, of the king. They're referring to his mother. Um, and, uh, and, and many other passages as well, uh, which especially if you go back to the original languages, are very clear um, about that. It kind, of gets, it kind of gets obscured when you get translations of translations of translations. Um, but ultimately we have this, this great image 
that the church sets before us. Of Mary, the most pure mother of God, who having, having been born as we are, inherits the kingdom of heaven as we will. Only she herself becomes that first fruit of humanity. So as she is, as we celebrate her birth today, we also should have to remember her heavenly birth uh, in, into, the, into the kingdom of God, in which she, in, uh, in, as, as the greatest of all human persons who has ever lived, was taken up, was resurrected, and has inherited that salvation which we all will, which we all will receive, um, uh, and is is seated at the at the hand of her son uh, in the kingdom.